All right, we already know what name we're going with. Now we're good. No more messing up. That was the only time I'm allowed to mess up. Now we're good. Now we're now we're gaming. All right, first thing you got to do is set the text speed. I don't remember the controls. All right, now we're good. All right, one of the most important things is to make sure you bounce off the edges. It makes you go faster. All right, so the story here. So apparently, you know, we're part of this like Highland Military Brigade, right? The Youth Brigade. And uh, we got surprise attacks by the quote-unquote city-state. But it actually wasn't. It was our own prince that attacked us. It's all very uh, not good. actually investigated the attack they find his dirty prints all over everything true well, that is indeed thank you highland investigated and found that there was no wrongdoing They want to ban you for the for the prince comment. Boys, that means I'm doing my job. It's true. I'm sure there will be many more puns to come.
There he is. This is also how you know when you have to actually start paying attention again. So we jumped off the cliff and survived, as you do when you jump off a cliff, and um, made our way down the river, and we were found by these two guys who uh, obviously have never been seen before. They're completely new characters in this Vicodin series. Now, they were in the first game, Flick and Victor, two of my favorite characters, because I'm basic, I guess. And uh, they now run like a mercenary brigade in uh, in the city state, which is supposed to be our enemy. All right. So, so this is our. Uh, oh, you can go. This is our taskmaster. So yes. Pole. I was wondering whether uh, if we uh, if chat liked him or not. Uh, in order to determine that, we should set up a poll. I knew. See, that one was too obvious. I knew you were gonna. Say yeah, that. no, I'm sorry. All right. Uh, when he runs a storage place, it's called the pole vault. Okay. Uh, you can do better than that one. Yeah, I know. Yeah. The thing about pole though, is he's really load bearing for the first part of the game. I can do better than that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I should never recycle a joke. Actually, it's hard not to, because there's so many I've done. Did you already use that one? Yeah, it's part of my upholstery. Huh. <laughs> huh. Indeed. That is very appalling. I agree. All right, my. I keep using them again, again. My my third favorite character is Gen Gen. That was a very unpopular opinion. But I'm gonna stick with it. So we gotta go pick up some flour, because for some reason, they just don't have any. Which seems like kind of an oversight, but, you know. You would think, like, a military operation would have really nice supply lines, but... I guess not. Well, they should have planted a rose bush, then it'd have plenty of flour. That's, yeah, true. Hello, how is uh, Ayodin Chronicle so far, I guess, the beta? Shouldn't spoil. Don't spoil anything, but just give your uh, general impressions. 
If we're allowed to do that. I don't know. Are we even allowed to do that? All right, so we got to go around uh, picking up all these these oil spills. It's like Alaska in here. Hopefully there's no birds around. Wait, how did how did um uh like random encounters work in these games? Were they? I mean, there also there also was like a step counter, I think, right? And I pressed the wrong button. That's fine. Don't worry about it. Uh, but it was also RNG, wasn't it? Because you could sometimes go a really long time without getting one. All right, so uh, next part of the story, Joey, the friend who uh, jumped off the cliff with us, also survived completely unscathed uh, and has decided to come save us. And he's doing a very, he did a very poor job of it the first time, but this time it looks like he's, uh, he's really on top of the ball. So if I move like that, oops, it actually uh -huh. um, ends this whole sequence much faster. Because if you don't move, I think she does three different things where you don't have where you have to make that choice. So if you just move Im immediately, you just skip the whole thing. And it's because this is a speed run. We are trying and not speed runners to like do... to die. So it's true. Or at least get, you know, a knife in the head.
So if you if you have too high a refresh rate, it lowers the encounters. That's interesting. Future speedrun tactic right there. Yeah, one of the things I hated about Tagon 1 was the whole having to have characters with medicines on them and everything. That was really, really obnoxious. Luckily, Future Spikotans didn't really do that. But it really is an annoying aspect of Spikotan 1. And that the captain talked about taxes. That's the adult conversation they True. Well, God. Excellent start so far. This is how you know it's going to be a good one. I don't mind the like the six time medicines. I think that's that's fine. Obviously, if it was just one, that would be awful. But they could also just you know stack them indefinitely up to like ninety nine or something. It would definitely save uh, space in the inventory. But maybe that's kind of the point. You're supposed to have inventory management be part of the game. And you can really tell I've not done this in a long time. All right, we didn't take any damage, right? I don't. I don't think I failed any encounters after the first one. Oh, look, it's Wendy's. Should have already beaten the Mist Monster by now. Oh God. I don't know why I keep second guessing myself. So there is like a safe way to do this, but I didn't do it. We just gotta hope for the best here. Okay, we're good, we're good, we're good. That's a very low roll. Uh, 
All right, so we beat the first boss of the game. Congratulations to us. Oh, I was so close. One of these days I'll get that right. But it's interesting how they leave the town we get to. Yeah, they were all excited to come here. They were like, oh, we need to go to new places. And then they just leave immediately. It's like they saw, they took one look at it and they were like, yeah, no. Thanks for the good luck, Space Coyote. I'm gonna need it. I've already messed up a couple times. Alright, here we go. This is this is a big moment. We're gonna find out if we get the spark crystal. Which is very bad if it happens. Well it's not very bad. But it's annoying. Okay, we're good. So if you get the uh get so there's like a whole series of things you have to do in this game. In order to do the route, the the speedrun route, um, just getting the spark crystal after that battle messes that up slightly. So you have to do a couple different things. It, it makes you go a little bit slower. It's not a huge deal. It's just kind of annoying. I've only actually encountered it happening once, and the one time it happened was, of course when I was doing one of these on RPG Limit Break. So I had to, on the fly, hopefully get it right. It was a really fun experience. Top notch. That's Princess Jillia. She's going to have a couple more things to do later in the game. Mostly just standing around, not really doing anything, but she's there.
All right. So this is a very important moment in the speed run that you make sure you make these correct options three separate times. Otherwise, it's a very bad situation. All right, we're good. So what we're doing is basically just ignoring Nanami. We're just letting her die and running away. If you're playing this game for real, you would never do that. And you actually have Nanami for this you know, portion of the game that's coming up. She will eventually show back up because she has to. She's a story character. But they gave us that little option to change it. So we can not be annoyed by her for the first uh, couple hours. Well, and the speed run only the first hour, but you know, you know what I mean. She comes with the best armor in the game, though. It's called plot armor. It's true. That's because she has to. She has to die later. <laughs> or not die. But you don't have spoilers. Well, look, if you're watching this, it's, it's too late. It's already over. Every Sukoden game kind of has like an Anami like character. A character that always is in your party all the time, always forces themselves into it. Sukoden 1 had Grimio. Uh, and then Victor and Flick kind of trade off. Um, and they even force themselves into the final boss battle, which I'm glad that Sukoden decided not to do that again. Um,. Three has a bunch of different people. Uh, each each character has their their core group. Um, four doesn't really have anyone, actually, for the most part. Uh, maybe Lino. They figured they punished you enough with Laszlo, so. That's true, yeah. And you only get like three other people you can have too, so. Oops. I had to walk in and out of this village 17 times. Yeah. 17? Uh, yeah, well, you have to talk to the innkeeper 17 times. Oh, okay. And then uh, in 5, it's either it switches between Leon and then Mia Keys. Then back to Leon. But the nice thing is, in like Sukoden 5, they give you the option of having like an entourage group. So if someone gets forced into your party you don't want, then you can just put them in there. Whereas in these games, if they're in your party, they're in your party. It's game over. All right, so I gotta talk to this guy 17 times. That's four. I've never asked that question, but this, but uh, can you recruit Zamza without Nan Nanami in your party? I don't know, actually. I think you have to have Nanami, or you, maybe you need like a, a group, like a certain character. I'm going to be honest, I have no idea if I did that 17 times. I'll find out in a moment. Yeah, we will. Oh, 
the wander. We did it. We're good. Hello, thanks for thanks for joining us. We're gonna have lots of fun for the next uh six hours. This is Pilica. She's just kind of this child that's around for a while. She's right now in her happy era, but that era is going to change in about five minutes. But for now, she's pretty happy. She's like, oh, go buy me some, some thing and muse, please. Let that be a lesson to you. Read the notes before you start moving. If you said you didn't have the money, you could actually get Joey to buy that for you. Well, he does. It's great. He does. That's what he does. Uh, so you can either buy it yourself or you can have Duke Joey sell his uh, Duckle signet ring from... Get it? It's like a Dune reference. And since his family's disowned him, it doesn't mean anything to him anymore, so I'm That's not true. selling. For the uh, for the for the Dune heads in the in the comments, Joey's last name in this game is Atreides. All right, so we just went we just went over to Muse. We were we were gone for like two minutes and while we were gone the entire village got burned down you know what they say about joey he he uh he knew military tactics as if born to them And technically, these two people are the chosen ones. Joey and, and Ryu are the chosen ones. They haven't been chosen yet. I mean, they got chosen. In the... Well, yeah, they will be the chosen. That's true. That's true. I don't know why it went down. That is not the way you're supposed to go. In two minutes, the village got burned down, the fires dried out, and everyone got buried.
You played the game 25 years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I played it for the first time probably 23, 22 years ago. Uh, when I was like 10 years old. It was the first video game, honestly, one of the first video games I ever played. After one, obviously. So they finally got her to lay down on her pillow, -ka. And not only is she laying down, for some reason she's laying down, like, on her stomach. Not move today. So Suikoden actually, um, it has its version of chocobos, but they only appear in the first and tactics they appear in the first game and tactics the uh i think the the kanga corn is the same thing from the first game i think right is that correct the uh the tauntaun thing from the first game i don't know maybe i'm just crazy Uh, uh, clearly, I don't remember my Suko more. We run past the poor bird. Yep. Those birds there, uh, if you actually put them back in the tree. Oh god, this is. Okay. I didn't expect that. Who wants escargot for lunch? True. Jellies. I'm blaming my <laughs> controllers, just not not being very nice to me today. Okay, so basically what we had to do is we had to come in here, we had to get into a specific fight and level up the characters to a specific level, and we got that fight almost immediately, which is a good thing. But it never happens that quickly, so I was not prepared. I was not mentally prepared. Oh, sigh. It's just that character. Sigh, yeah. Sigh's not a bad character. I don't mind sigh. I guess if you were desperate, he'd be a sight for sore eyes. Yeah. True. Uh, yeah, time for the world record for sure. That's definitely going to happen. I haven't already messed up like five times. And that's in the first 40 minutes. And you can only imagine how many more times I'm gonna mess up.
All right, the bird, right? Yeah. So if you if you pick that bird up, put it back in the tree. Um, that actually triggers uh, the recruitment for two characters for Shiro and Kinnison. Shiro is a great character. I love Shiro. I was always a big Shiro fan. I always put Shiro in my party. Kinnison is fine. Kinnison's just kind of like the backup for Shiro. They have a Unite attack. Gen Gen also has a Unite attack with Shiro. Oh yeah, as we were in the forest, again, for two minutes, this village got attacked. Now we came back just in time to actually see it happen. So yeah, Luca Blight is kind of like, um, you know, the the. the if that death, he really hammed it up, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Luca Blight is like the uh, the cliche, super evil character, right? Like he he's not gonna he's gonna kill everybody. Um. super evil but we like Luca Blight you know he's a good character maybe but the thing is uh you mentioned you mentioned yeah Joffrey Joffrey is not a fighter right he could not do it himself whereas someone like Luca Blight he will do it all himself and he will take 30 arrows to the chest before he dies Real Shakespearean deck, basically. Whereas Joffrey, he just, you know, I'm not going to say what happens unless anyone hasn't seen it. The TV show that already ended. Spoiler alert, they, uh, at the end, there's a Starbucks that uh, is in Winterfell, so. It's true. I mean, well... You know, it's cold, it's cold, you know, you gotta have like a hot coffee, right? All right, yes. Yeah. So Starbucks actually rules the Seven Kingdoms at the end of it. What if... Uh, I don't remember what I was gonna say. I'm, I'm, I'm already out of it. What did I just do? Oh, okay. I was looking in the notes for what I choose there and picked the wrong option. Okay. There should be a mess up counter so far. Well, it won't be here all day if he keeps defending. Well, at least I won't die. That's good, at least. Right, so duels in this game are just like rock, paper, scissors, basically. They get a little more complicated down the line, but for the most part, it's just rock, paper, scissors. And by down the line, I mean in future games. Not in this one. Oh yeah, what do we want to okay. name our, our army? We haven't thought about this. Um, uh, we still only have eight characters, I think, so... Someone have a name? Any idea, anyone? Uh 
we just yeah we need we need a name for the army itself uh Our army. Okay. Works for me. Oh, hey, yeah, you guys are talking about Luca Bite up there. I was too busy <laughs> making mistakes. Uh, yeah, so Luca Bite actually has it has like a interesting backstory. Um, a villain origin story, basically. He uh, when he was a kid, he got abducted along with his mother by some bandits quote unquote bandits in reality they were bandits that were um hired by the city state to basically do that uh and while they were uh, captured the bandits did some bad things basically to luca blight's mother while Luca Blight had to watch. And during all this, the king basically doesn't care. He doesn't do anything. Ares ran away. Bravely ran away, away. Basically, yeah. And that's when Han Cunningham, who is the previous chosen one, on the Highland side, he saves Luca Boy. And I believe uh, it's not leave it. No, don't leave it. Oh, God. <laughs> Let's add it to the counter. Uh, okay, that wasn't so bad. Um, Julia is basically the uh, culmination of that. So he's not actually she's not actually Luca Blight's real sister, just half sister. Um, and that's you know, kind of mentioned later on. She's like, oh, when when Jillia starts talking about her father, Luca will be like, oh, that's not really your father. And, th and that's basically the reason why Luca hates the city state so much. Quite the villain origin story. Yeah, that's actually one thing that's interesting about this game, too, is you have two different kinds of evil, basically, on each side. Um, you have kind of the just outright blatant evil of, you know, of Luca Blight. You have the sort of bureaucratic evil of the state, of the city-state. You have, uh, and when it comes to the city-states also, they never get along, they all fight against each other. Obviously, you were on the side of the city-state, but still, they're not that's so great of people either.
Yeah, I mean, like, Luca Blight really is a monster of the city-state's own creation. Like, they... It was the mayor of Muse, the leader of the city-states, who led the... created the situation that made Luca into who he became. And that doesn't, you know, absolve Luca of the responsibility, but, like... Still. You know, it kind of continued that cycle of violence between the two sides. off here. Hey, you gotta get the pill again. Oh yeah, you have like Gerudo, who is he's supposed to be on your side, but he's just like a, he just doesn't care. And you have Alec Wismail, Wise Male, Teresa's father, who did, you know, unspeakable things to the Grasslands. And that made, you know, Lucia then come in on the uh, side of Highland. Like it's all just, you know, these different sides. It's like, we have to contend with the, the evil of the previous generations, basically. And the current generations, even. It's just an interesting story. You know, there's a reason why it is my favorite game. And that's one of them. I wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't my favorite game, that's for sure. That guy's gonna star in a new movie. It's called Deadpool. That one was pretty good. I like that one actually. Hey, as soon as Pole dies, this place comes falling down. He truly was load-bearing for this fort. Ooh, cutscene. An FMB of some unknown guy, whoever that's supposed to be. I hope there is a, a pole character. Cause I, I like pole, you know? He justice for pole. He was just a guy trying to make his way in the world. History hit him and there was nothing he could do. He's just an expendable character to history.
All right. Now they are chosen. All right. Now we get a nice flashback sequence that is for some reason shown to them, like they see the narration. Yeah, you know, I used to always think that Leknot was like, actually looked like an old woman, but she does not. She is like 300 years old, but she looks like, she's like 25. That was just like an artifact of in Suicoden 1. The artwork is kind of weird. <laughs> there are a few characters that you can't really understand how old they are, or if they're a man or a woman. The biggest example of that, obviously, is um, what was the what was the the P game character Marco. So Marco. Their character portrait looks like like a an old woman basically, but they're actually a young boy, <laughs> which was a huge surprise to me when I found that out. Yeah, she is actually only around three hundred. I think maybe three hundred to four hundred. Marco's three hundred years old. No, not. <laughs> Hey, maybe it's possible. Well, he is an old woman, yeah. You see, <laughs> uh, Lekna is uh, around 300 to 400, like the uh, the gate rune, like Ted is 300, and Windy was already running around when Ted was a kid, and Windy and Lekna are around the same age. Yeah, Tuda also. I thought Tuda was like a girl, but is actually a boy. Which you learn in the third game because he shows up again.
So Lechna is was from the clan of the gate, I think it was called, something like that. They protected the gate rune. And at one point, I think it was Harmonia, they attacked their clan so they could take the rune. And Windy and Lechnot, they split the rune and they take it with them and they run away. I'm not exactly, I don't remember the exact reasoning why Windy became evil and Lechnot became not evil. There's a whole story there. But they kind of run around. Windy becomes evil, is like helping Neck Lord to try to gain, or trying to gain like the Soul Eater and everything. Someone more up to date in the lore is gonna have to get me on that one. But uh... like not basically goes into hiding, and she becomes like the seer on the Magician's Isle in the first game, and Windy doesn't know that it's her sister. They know their sisters, but like Wendy didn't know that that was like not on the island. But yes, you should play Sweet 3. I 100% agree. It is a. I love Sweet Golden 3. It's a long slog of a game. And as some people here will say, you should never ever speedrun it, because it is just an awful experience. But I really enjoy that game. It has a cool story, it has a really kind of interesting mechanics and in the way the characters work, and you go between different points of view. You see different events in the game from different perspectives. Very interesting idea. It does have some good spell animations. Just don't expect them to look good if you're playing on an emulator. Because that'll drop your FPS to like 1. All right, so we got Nanami back. She is back. She doesn't care that we just left her there. And we can't get into Muse, so we're gonna kind of go over to this area over here. Sukun 3 does have some cool unite attacks. One of the best is, of course, the dogs. I saw um, Sea Glance do use the dog unite attack to kill Uber or something. <laughs> it's, a, it's a pretty good one.
add it to the mistake counter. I'll pick the wrong option again. All right, so we're about to go into one of the most annoying areas of the game. It has killed many speedruns, including my own. So you have to go in here. It has very tough fights, kind of a long dungeon. And you have to fight a specific battle. Well, so you're, well there's two options. Um, and it has to go a specific way, with a little bit of luck, basically. You can very easily fail. Or you can just not get the battle, which does also happen. It would be nice to get some marathon luck, that's for sure. I don't know if I remember how to get through it. You have to kill everybody off the jelly. Yes. What? Okay. Yeah, you have to kill everyone except Joey because you want Joey to level up higher than everybody else. The way experience works in this game is that it's just like a set amount that gets spread out through all the characters that survive through the battle. So if you kill up, kill off everybody except one person, then the one person will get all the experience. The lower your level, the more experience you get. Basically, yeah. So you can jump up and level super high. If you're low level and you gain the... and you actually survive. We use that twice in the speedrun. Here, and then one other time to get Ryu jumped up and level. I'm gonna save here just to be careful. Because as soon as I go back and go right, that's when that's when the fun begins. Oh, so it's the same in Ayudin. I mean it's a good way to do it, right? Gotta keep Joey at high health. It's very important. It's a good way to make it so you don't have to grind. Which can be very annoying in some games. If you want to level up someone quickly, you just... like, And it's later in the game, you can just do that very easily. Especially if you have so many characters like these games have. So now we're looking for five megawatts or four salamanders. I agree. You should definitely thank it for these games. Like, obviously, they're a big part of all of our childhoods. Big part of mine, that's for sure.
All right, so as soon as we get this uh, level up battle squared away, we can move on. Indeed. Were you, were you saving that one? For just yeah. after I got the square plate? Nope. Okay, so this should be a good time to go get some popcorn or whatever you want to do while we run yeah. around trying to get this. So we gotta we gotta force the fight now because it didn't show up. That's another thing that can happen. If you don't get it, you have to just do this for a while. Of course, now I don't get into any fights. How it always is. I always thought the encounter rate in these games was really high, but I guess when you need a fight, it, the encounter rate just really isn't there. That's pretty much how it always is, yeah. I mean, it, it's, sometimes it happens in Matilda, too, when you're doing the Matilda glitch. Oh, go that. Okay, here we go. Now we're good. All right, so... Hey. Oh. Good thing I look. Gen's gone. Okay. Good. No, see, it's bad when Joey does that. We do not want that. Should be fine. Of course, now you hit the whole row. All right, we did it. There he is, level 30. We just want him to have over 100 magic. That way we get all the magic attacks for this upcoming boss fight. Alright, so here he is, the, uh, the, the twin heads. Double head, whatever. That would have been bad.
You got a spark rune there. I mean, you always get that. You know what I realized earlier when I was talking about how you get that crystal that messes everything up? It's not the spark crystal. It's the hazy crystal. You get the spark crystal here. So that was the reason why I bought the Escape Talisman earlier, was to be able to use it here. It wouldn't have been such a big deal if I hadn't gone back to get it. I had just run out instead, but... And there's no battles on the way out. So it wouldn't have been such a big deal. But still. Still. One of the pigs is gone. Uh, I just want to make it perfectly clear to everybody. The time right now is really bad. It is very, very bad. I feel like even my best has got to be like 10 minutes faster than this. All right, so we get back, right? And Hilda is has collapsed. She's sick. No one, no one can find out what the problem is. So Joey runs off. He, we sent him all the way to Green Hill for some reason. To try to find a doctor. Um, and everyone forgets about the healing herbs that we just got in the dungeon. In the ruins, except for me, I remembered. So I'm going to go get them, and they just magically heal Hilda. As it turns out, it was the curse of the ruins itself. It was trying to teach you a lesson, basically. <laughs> I wish our, like, ancient ruins would do that. Like, if you're searching for treasure in the ruins, it, like, tr it just tries to teach you a lesson. I was trying to, to teach him that the real treasure is the friends and family we make along the way. So we did this whole thing just so we can get an entry permit into Muse. It is Alex and Hilda's entry permit, so we have to act like them. It's not going to go well, but it is what it is. What part of uh, the 32-year-old uh, woman did you not get from Nami's performance? Maybe, yeah. And also, you know, Joey being Pete. Pete definitely looks, or Joey definitely looks like he's, you know, eight years old. Why they couldn't just use Pelica, I don't know. As we've learned in this Forgotten World, sometimes... Young boys can look like old men or old women. <laughs> they can't yet look like younger boys. This, this doesn't work. 
I can only look like old women. You are right. Now, young boys can look like young girls. That works. True. They're having like you know, a nice heartfelt conversation there while we're stuck in prison. You know, when you think about it, actually, this whole ruse they had actually did work because we made it inside news. So parents, if you have a child that can't fall asleep, just push them back down onto the bed every time. I'll take your word for it. Hello, Connor Cordell. Thanks for thanks for coming in. Right, that's what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> So now we're in a big city, so everyone's going to get in the way where you're trying to run. <laughs> One thing that uh, Spikoden and, and JRPGs in general taught me is that when you're an adult in society, you have a spot on the map that you just stand and walk around in circles in. Always. That's your that's your life. You also say the same thing over and over again. Exactly. It's like any office job, you know? You just sit in the same place and say the same thing. Exactly. That's basically their job. They just go and do that. Now you always have to have one person who says, like, welcome to the town you're in. Well, that is one character I could definitely do without in this game, is Jess. Yeah, we all hate Jess. The, the town most like Costco, for sure, that they would say something like that, is, is Hod Village in 5. I bet they're all, like, super, like, toxically positive. And you just listen to the music.
Yeah, I know a lot of a lot of people in this Yon community like to really talk up, you know, Alma Kanan, uh, Tinto for best city themes. But hot, it just it blows it out of the water. I like the Cobalt Village theme. Uh, that's a good one. It's very jovial, as you would kind of expect a Cobalt Village theme to be. I mean, Hod unironically, though? Oh. It ain't great. <laughs> no, it's good. Never mind. I'm, j uh, I'm just joking. Hello. Thank you for uh, for watching. For coming on in to speak coding too. Alright, so we have a mission. We've been given a task by Jess to go to sneak into the Highland camp on the border and find out how many how much provisions they have. And for you, you people that are that know about Suikoden, you know that the guy who's guarding the tent up there is none other than Nash. Who has infiltrated the camp as a spy for Harmonia. Well, spy, maybe not in like a a negative way. He's just kind of like checking it out. Nash is a character in the third game and also the protagonist of the two in-between games that were made. Suku Gaiden 1 and Suku Gaiden 2. One takes place during this game and Two takes place during or after this game and before the third game. It's kind of like a prequel almost. It mentions a couple things that are in the third game, mentions some places. It contains mostly the characters from two. There's that the princess lady again. Yep, there she is. as we now know, is only Luca's half-sister. But was still brought up as a princess. Now, why um, either one of Joey or uh, Ryu, you'd want to sit with your back to the door of the tent? I'm not sure. That's, um, it could be they didn't. Wise. Yeah, they didn't listen to any of 
Joey's battle master's uh, tips, you know, you're not supposed to sit with your back to the door. You're not supposed to let anyone come up from behind you. All right, so as we were trying to escape, they found us, and Joey was like, you should run away. And he, he, he forces me to go. And this is going to create lasting consequences that will reverberate throughout the entire game. Yeah. Surely not. No, everything's going to be fine. Don't worry about it. Nothing to see here, folks. He's going to show back up again and everything's going to be fine. Oh, I'll add it to the mistake counter. I mean, the real question isn't where do giant spiders come from the real question is where do any spiders come from once you can answer that question then we can elevate up to the uh, giant spiders Get out of the way, old woman. <laughs> Victor's one weird trick. That'll get him through any bureaucrat. All right, so Joey hasn't come back yet, and that's that's making Nanami very upset. So she's going to go out front and try to wait for him. And I'm going to go out there and talk to her. We're so confident that he's going to come back for sure that we're just going to go to bed. Yeah, basically. Yeah, see you later. <laughs> now, normally, if you're actually playing this game, 
you would get a uh, you would go into a long conversation where she tells you a story about about Ryu going missing and Joey getting all frantic about it. It's all very you know sad and tear jerking. But in the speed room, you don't care. Anytime Nanami wants to talk to us, just ignore her. There's the spin. Alright, I'm just gonna save him. Position? What do you mean? I don't get it. Alright, so there's a big meeting of... Uh, all the different leaders of the city-states, they've all come together. It seems like a bit of a security issue, putting all the leaders in one place. While the Highland army is literally right on the other side of the border, waiting to attack. But no one said that the city-states were smart. If they were, they wouldn't be in this situation. To this game. Like, you absolutely just need to. Yeah, we love Gerudo. Okay, so bad news. It looks like the Highland army is attacking. Who could have seen this one coming? Let me get you let me get you caught up in the situation, right? So Luca Blight claims that the city states have just massacred a bunch of children. Then he goes into the eastern part of the city states and he starts burning down villages. And the city states all come together and they're like, hmm, what should we do about this? And they do nothing to repair themselves. 
All right, yeah. A very well put together uh, country we have here. Definitely without any corruption or any leaders that are comp that are incompetent. Oh, and a hundred nade star. That is a safety save that needs to be done right there because there's a missable character in here. That's true. Yeah, if and you're doing, it's if you're, completely. Yeah. yeah, you have to. It's up to the computer whether we get him or not. I mean, we can't really do anything about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if this is one away, uh, that character that's kind of sitting out in the middle is Gilbert, who is a mercenary. He's a recruitable character. The only way to recruit him is in this battle right now, and you have to damage his unit. That's the only way. If it doesn't happen, you miss him. And then after his unit gets damaged, you have to make sure that he doesn't get killed in the battle. Yes, because if he gets killed, there is a chance that he dies... Completely. And so far, it's not looking good for us. You kind of hope on the first fire spear that he, he gets hit, but... Uh-oh. Okay, we got him. And in, uh, in this, any percent, it does not matter. You don't ever need him. But it's still nice to have him. Plus, if we don't have them, then who's gonna do the wa the wall climbing game? We don't. We won't have Ace. It's also kind of, it's pretty difficult for his unit to not die. It's more often than not he does. You just have to hope that he doesn't actually die. And it is a thing can happen for any like non-story character, they can die in one of these battles. In a speedrun once I had Adlai die. The elevator guy. He actually killed himself, which is very interesting. But it's not, it doesn't affect the any percent run. 100%, uh, 108, it absolutely does. Not only do you have to recruit the characters, but you all to get the best ending, you have to have them all live through it. The only real problem with these battles is that 90% of the time it's just and missing each other pretty much yeah and one of the the very annoying things uh -oh. is they're mostly scripted so there's not a whole lot you can do oh this is gonna be an interesting one for sure without flick there they're just gonna come right down to us Matilda Knight's doing a good job over there. Gilbert's really, really surviving over there. He took out Golgan? Jeez.
So I, I do wonder if there's some sort of you know, perfect optimization here to try to not as you can't necessarily optimize it yourself, but like if what RNG is it that gives you the best outcome? Like what units die? Because the more units that die, that means less units that go, but the more units that get hit, that means more animations. I wonder what the best combination of things happening is. Hilbert sure is earning his pay. Yeah, he really is. Yeah, he held them all back on his own while damaged. I bet it was all Ace that did it. So in Sukun 3, there's a character named Ace, and it is revealed in the game that he is one of Gilbert's mercenaries in that company that we just recruited. He's also renowned as uh, being the the guy who runs the rock climbing game and mini game in uh, this game. Maybe if we have time later, we can uh, do some rock climbing mini game. I don't even know if I remember how to play it. But it's not really that complicated. Alright, so... I'm going to point out here that there's three mares and a vice mare in this room, unguarded. And we just walk in. While Highland is at war with the city-states. They learned all the wrong lessons from Victor just punching that guy. Is it just not even bother having a guy guard the door? Actually, I wonder if Annabelle was alone and... We, she was going to actually tell us that Joey would just would have just killed her then, which would have been really interesting, in broad daylight, just with everyone still around, just stabbing her right there. Spoilers: that is what's going to happen. Yeah, Kage doesn't get a face portrait. There are a few people in the game that were in the first one that don't actually get one. A couple people in... When you go to Torin later, when you go to Gregminster, there's like Alan and Grenseal are there, Tesla's there. They don't get portraits. Hanzo, even though he was not a star in the first game, he did have a portrait. He does not have a portrait in this one. I think you can see Sonia. I think she is there in her house in Gregminster. She doesn't have a portrait. Tio reincarnated as a cat doesn't have a portrait. Yeah, I can't wait for the remake too. I mean, it's going to be gonna be nice hopefully when it comes out if that will ever happen it's been like a year and a half since they announced it it 
so now they have a guard. But the guard is guarding the wrong room. The most competent government in the world here. Yeah, Konami, they finally did a good thing and then taking forever with it. Which I guess, you know, I guess it's good that maybe they're trying to make it better. Alright, so in the story, Joey gets captured and then he he decides to switch sides and was given a task to murder the mayor of Muse who is basically the de facto leader of the city-states. So he does it. Everyone's sad. Jess comes in and thinks it was me, and then that causes a lot of friction later. So not only did Joey murder the mayor, she he also opened the gates to the city. So now the city is under attack. In the dead of night. At that point it's over. So it's it's done for Muse. And we, like we have always done before, run away. Run away. I hope in the remake that you could return to those two trees on the map there that you woke up from, go back to that area where they had the tree and you overlook the thing. That would be cool. Yeah, you should be able to build a monument there. Maybe after the war's over, they build a monument. Or they put a sign like this that says, Ryu was here. Alright, so we're trying to get the south window across the lake, but they're not letting us go. So we gotta go up here, yeah. And we're gonna run into some old friends. Luka likes to bounce off Bolgan's stomach for some reason. 
Don't worry about it. Don't think about it. All right. Now it's time for the best part of the game. Does anyone here like to gamble? It's our old friends Taiho and Yam Ku from the first game. And they haven't changed. They still like to make you play dice before they do anything. doesn't know this game okay I can beat a two I can be a two look at that what a perfect tie-ho literally a perfect tie-ho I think I I enjoy this mini game. Yeah, I think it's a fun one. It sucks when you have to do it though, because in in any percent you only have to do this once, but in 108 you have to do it two more times. You have to get you have to win 5,000 to get Tayo and Yamku, and then you have to do 5,000 again to get Shiloh. I oh, mean, read upon. Oh my God, read upon. Read upon is. Read upon is a game. That's for sure. The thing about read upon is when I when I was playing Skull and Four, the times I've played it, I never really understood how to play it. I know now that it's just like mahjong, but at the time I had no clue, so I literally was just pressing buttons and hoping for the best. Eventually you win, but I didn't really know what I was doing. And this, I I kind of learned the rules eventually, and you just need a higher number. Well, it's not that that, that complicated. So what we're doing here is we're doing the infamous Matilda glitch, where you're going to push in the door and go into Matilda a lot earlier than you're supposed to. And this is where the speedrun gets complicated. I don't want this one. So far, not so good. Stay. It's fine. So what we're doing is we're both trying to get into a specific fight, and we're trying to pick up one of the, the violence rune. Fine. 
Jeez. Alright, so this is very stressful. Wow, they literally picked the perfect people to attack. I've never been so lucky. So you gotta kill everyone off. That way... Ryu gets all the experience. God. Okay. Uh, that, was, that was extreme luck on that one. That easily could have gone very poorly. So now we just leveled up to level 55. That'll help us later with a whole bunch of encounters that we can escape. This is higher magic. And higher attack for any of the duels. Yep, just a casual 30 levels. Nothing to worry about. Oh, what a shame we didn't get the do re elves. Alright, so this is what starts the fun, violence, and what's the other rune? Kindness. Kindness. Yes, the kindness rune glitch. Which is what the whole rest of the game is based around. Alright, so with the Kindness Room. The Kindness Room, which we will pick up in about 30 seconds. What it does is, as throughout the game, you accumulate Kindness points. I think it's every hour or, every hour or two hours of playtime. <laughs> okay, maybe less, maybe uh, a little more than 30 seconds. And as you accumulate that time, it increases your attack level. Very wrong way there. Okay. There it is. Now, one way to actually decrease your kindness level is to die in battle. You get KO'd in one of the random encounters or whatever. That'll just move your kindness level down one. So, but here's the thing. There's a little bit of a, a bug in the code. Let me just do this thing first and I'll explain it. Okay. Uh, the bug in the code is that if you die a few times very early in the game, 
that means that the kindness level. You can drop your kindness yeah, below yeah, zero. I got it, I got it, I got it. Don't okay, worry. okay, 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 okay. I'm just, I'm trying to do all these things at once, you know? Okay. And it'll drop your kindness level below zero. And that gives you a negative number. And as we know, as programmers, negative numbers are bad. We don't like that. And what that'll do is uh, make it so your attack level doesn't just go up or down. It goes all the way up. It goes all the way to the highest level it can be, to 999. As I will show you in one second, after I do this, Look at Nami's attack as 999. And that's because we attached the kindness rune. So she will do godly amounts of damage now. One shotting or two shotting any boss. Now when you pair that with the violence rune, the violence rune, if you take damage in a fight, that's I believe less than or like more than half of your total damage, it'll put you into berserk mode, which increases your attack even more. It's a modifier on top of the 999, so it makes you do even more damage. It's all very fascinating. It's about time that Victor and Flick joined the group that they started. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Made him walk all the way over there. Alright, and then over here we pick up one more rune, which we will attach later. That's not where it is. There we go. Friendship rune, we attach that to, the, to Ryu later. To install the power of friendship. That's true. We have both violence and friendship. And kindness. And kindness. I know. Yeah. It's really kind of a mixed bag. All right, so back by popular demand comes everyone's favorite character, a certain vampire who miraculously didn't actually die. And here I thought you were talking about Freedy. <laughs> I've never heard anyone refer to him as Freedy before. <laughs> I mean, Freed's not so bad. Nah, he's pretty bad. Best thing about him is his wife. He is a huge wife guy, that's for sure. All 
right, there he is. It's Neck Lord. Everyone's favorite vampire. He's back. He didn't die in the first game. Yeah, but they can't call him Net Lord because, you know, copyright issues. So they'll have to call him um, uh, Cheek Lord. Forehead Lord, maybe? No, but isn't he called Neck Lord because that's where vampires bite you? On your Neck Lord? Yeah. Do vampires have to bite you on your neck or can they bite you somewhere else oh hang on somebody asked the question here let me get the blurb i remember this blurb okay <clears throat> welcome to the very yama tribute marathon here shook casing games made by Yama, creator of the suikoden and Odin series and the scenario writer for the uh, Alliance Alive. Oh, wait. Somebody typed it in the chat. Now I don't have to read to you. This is our tribute to Muriyama, who unfortunately passed away last month on February 6th. Yes. He was the creator of this game. And I like to think that he personally put the bug in the code. That allows us to have so much fun with this speedrun. That's a real reason why I left Konami. Because they made it too hard to speedrun Suikoden in 3. It's true. Definitely. So, so vampires can bite you anywhere. You know, I guess it, is it just like a just like a popular? I mean, vampires, you know, they aren't real. You know, <laughs> just saying. Uh, so I guess if we want, they can just bite you wherever you want. I know it's a hot take. The vampires aren't real, but I'm just getting it out there. Agreed, it was, uh, it basically was my childhood game. I didn't just play the games, I also was active on the forums. Uh, less so Suiko Source, I was more of a Suiko X guy. Took part in the, uh, the fun forum game that we had there. Anyone here, uh, was on there, I was the Wayoon and uh, in the Nameless Lands. And yeah, that's what I've done. Like, I've never run Speedgun 3. I, I know what makes it hard. Like, it's not hard, right? And you're probably going to get through it. It's just, it takes forever and there's no breaks. Which is a problem for me, because I don't want to have to deal with that.
I mean, that's the thing. I can't last for 11 hours. That's not going to happen. Now, maybe if we could throw breaks in, we can make that a thing that you're allowed to do. Then maybe, yeah, maybe I'll give it a try. You mean like a two-week break between the chapters or something? <laughs> I mean, why not, right? If you're going to have a break, you might as well just let it be as long as you want. You can wait three years between chapters if you want. I don't know if somebody wants to approve a video that's four years and 27 days long, but yeah, if you do. I'd accept it. I wonder what sordid past Victor has. Say that again? I wonder what sordid past oh, Victor has. Oh, I, I, I heard it. Okay, yeah, now I got it. Hey, look, I said I'd stop recycling puns, so the new ones just aren't going to hit so well. I forgive you. At least they're new. A 20% more cringe. I mean, Sorted Pass is pretty good. Okay, let's see what kind of damage Anami does here. Nice. 4,500. How many first-time players of this game didn't realize you could just go out the oh, way he's doing it automatically? So <laughs> darn, that would have been yep. that would have been something else if you. They definitely did that because of Pesmerga later in the game, because how annoying it is to have to get him in the in the first one. You have to go all the way to the top of Necklord's castle and then walk all the way back down again. Yeah, that is sad. Sad that he couldn't see his finished game. I mean, to be honest, I can't believe that this game is already 26 years old. I don't really want to think about it, honestly. Because then we start thinking about the relentless passage of time, and no one wants to do that. Why do we see, never see the organ room again once we obtain the castle? It was it was too punk rock. It just wasn't allowed. They like cordoned it off.
Oh man, it's another one of Victor's dead girlfriends. This is definitely a top Victor moment, for sure. That's why we love Victor. Oh, that's what I feel like in the morning right there. Hooray, Eileen's dead. She needed to die again. Yep. That's that's what we're doing, right? We, we kill... Oh, God, please. Oh. We need the Nami to get hit. Because we need her to be the Berserk. Thank you. Please don't go again. Okay, you're going for Victor. Very nice. Alright. I think we're good. There it is. 4,500 damage. Yeah, that's why I love Victor in this one. Like, well, I love Victor in general. Like, he'll just do whatever. He's stubborn. I respect that. And yeah, this this fight, just like in the first game, the the castle fight, the fight you have right before getting your castle, is kind of like a weed out fight. It's a tough one, but it ain't so bad if you you know use all the glitches. So simply just do that, and you'll be fine. Alright, pro tip, don't pick the first option. If you're in a speedrun. Then you have to leave and come back in. Who needs anybody else? Alright, so now we need a, a strategist. Very important to have a strategist. And in Suikoden, that's a major character, always. So we're gonna go recruit a, a bit of a... He's a bit of a hothead, but he's good. He's really good. His name is Shu. Hmm. 
he just he's a very smart guy he got kicked out of the strategist school because he was a hothead and now he uses his his smarts for for the evilest of activities the evilest of fields economics and oh finance. shoot he didn't join our party yeah unfortunately we have to go through a whole song and dance Is this what I do first? Yeah, okay. Apple, you should be ashamed of yourself. Also, the only reason we're doing this, too, is because Apple kind of isn't a great strategist. She, uh, it's kind of mid, you know, as the kids say. to the mistake counter. It is a good game. It is a great game. <laughs> Throw a stone out the window. Yeah. I mean, pretty much. I, I mean, I kind of... It, it's fine, though, right? Like, how old is she supposed to be? She's supposed to be, like, 18. So, she's still young. She's allowed to get a bunch of people killed through her, ba her bad strategies. to the mistake counter. Because this guy wants to duel us so we close the Seuss gate. Clearly a bad idea on his part.
So, not only do you have to fight to duel him to close the Susuke, you also have to duel him to get him to join you. For some reason, he didn't learn the first time. So you may notice me bouncing off a bunch of things. One of the tricks of the speedrun is if you bounce off things like that, it actually makes you go slightly faster. And one of the most important things is to try to get into less random encounters. Less random encounters means you know a little bit of save time, but also less of a chance of failing the escape. And if you, you know, get less of those, your time will go down. So by doing that, by being more efficient in your walking, you get through random encounter areas faster, and thus save time. I'm sure if I ever tried to play this game casually ever again, then I haven't for a while. It'll be very difficult to not just try to make it as efficient as possible. That's true. I mean, Shu is... Well, maybe Shu became that way because everyone was so cold to him. The cycle of coldness. Here's yet another scripted battle where you're not controlling anybody, except for your couple guys. Oh god. Add that one in the mistake counter. I don't know why I keep thinking Rune is the second option. So the trick here, you actually want to attack Sanji's unit. But if you do that, it kind of triggers the event itself anyway. Just healing yourself. So that's what you're supposed to do. I was supposed to do that a turn earlier. Whatever. I didn't. It's not the end of the world. See, that's why you need a strategist, right? You need a strategist when you're outnumbered. Isn't that what Romance of the Three Kingdoms has taught us?
basically you just want to move our guys away from Sanji. He's going to start chasing after us. And if he attacks us, it's not, like, it's not a bad thing if he attacks us, it's just kind of a waste of time. So in that way, it is a bad thing. All right, Nautrux, Jet, um, I have to go do some adulting, so um, I might hop back in a little bit later on. Good luck with the rest of the run, and enjoy. Thank you. Thanks for uh, the puns. I'll try to do some while you're gone. All right. So we got Golgan, very nice, very nice. Yeah, for some reason Sanji decided not to chase after us. Being outnumbered, we're really uh, doing pretty well here. Jeez. <laughs> I need to mess up more often. We easily could have won that fight, too. Like, outright. Well, technically, you can't actually win win. Because it's scripted and it'll end at some point. Alright, here's one thing that really annoys me. Why did they join my party? There, There's literally no point. They're going to be out of my party within 5 seconds. There's no reason it needed to tell me that. Alright, so at this point in the game, there is a long kind of story that Victor will tell you. He'll tell you a story about Genkaku and Han and how they knew each other and the story behind them and what happened to Genkaku and why he uh, went and became a hermit. But you don't have to listen to the story. You can just go back to bed and ignore it. So that's what we do. Because we don't care. All right, we need a castle name. Uh, last thing we have to name. Anyone got any ideas? Otherwise, I'm just going to go with an old favorite. Oh, okay. I, don't, I can't fit that, but I can name it. Is it called Bear and Rabbit? Is that the full name? Do I have an and? Yeah, I do have an and, actually. 
Is it rabbit and bear or bear and rabbit? What is it? Which one? Can you do spaces? No, you can't. Let me just make sure. How do I expect it? All right, it's rabbit and bear. That's what it is. Okay. Oh, yeah, we'll just do R&B. That's good. I'm good with that. Good thinking, everyone. I could have called it Konami Castle. That would have been controversial. It's all right. I would probably get them swapped too all the time. You can add that to your mistake counter. Alright, so we've been uh, contacted by this guy. He used to work in Muse, but now he works for Two River. Two River is another one of the city states. And they need our help. Because Highland's going to attack them. But to get there, unfortunately, we need a boat. And there's only two people we know that can captain a boat. One of them is Taiho. And you are, oh my god, you are allowed to recruit him. And I could, if I wanted to, I could recruit him right now. And I can have him be my captain. He can be my captain, my captain. However, it's kind of annoying. I don't want to have to beat him in that dice game again. So instead, I'm going to talk to the next best thing. And that is Mr. Duel Me to Do Anything, Amada. I'm going to go all the way back here. I'm going to ask Amada if he wants to be our captain. But in typical Amada fashion. He just wants to get hit over the head. Bye, Mata.
So now we have a captain for our little boat. Don't know why we needed a captain for the boat. But we got one. I mean, look, I, you know, I'm not gonna... Oh my god, add to the mistake counter. I thought I was supposed to go straight there. Look, you know, maybe, you know, some people, they just have preferences. They just have things they like. And Amato likes getting beaten up. There's nothing I can do about that. And I, I respect his life choices. No, absolutely not. Should really scroll the notes earlier. All right, so we have an important thing to do when we get here. All right, so we just we were just a victim of a petty crime. And I already forgot the faster way to do this. So we're just going to do it the normal way.
There's a lot of weird things going on in this part of the game. You got Ridley, or Amada likes getting beat up. Ridley has a whip. It's... I know, right? It really is a match made in heaven. What is a plenty potentiary? Oh, that guy almost got in the way. I always, I always mess that up. I always think I have to go up when I go into this. Oops. So Chaco does it to us again. This time it's to Pitcher. Someone alert the New York Post about this. Alright, so now we're in the sewers. We need, we need Fitcher's money back, right? He's really obsessed with getting his money back. So we've gone into the dangerous sewers. But luckily, this actually takes us exactly where we need to go. That's what we call good dungeon design. We are getting a lot of encounters, though.
Now we get to fight a big giant rat. Because it's the sewers. And what else is there going to be? supposed to do? Supposed to do family attack, right? Sure. Why not? This isn't going the way it was supposed to go. Yeah, at least she landed it. Alright, we're good. I got the poison room from a giant rat. How apt. That's true. You're not wrong. Name an RPG without a giant rat. I know, Ben Jammin. It's gonna. Hopefully, it's gonna be good. It'll probably be good. I'm excited for it. Probably play it eventually, not immediately, but. If it really is truly a spiritual successor, I know that I will like it. Reinforcement? Alright, so Chaco wanted to talk, but I don't care. So I'm just gonna ignore him. Nope. Once again, I'm supposed to talk to the innkeeper. I literally wrote it in the notes to do it, and I still didn't do it. I still haven't played Rising. I'll, I'll play eventually. <laughs> I'm so slow with playing video games. There is a schedule. I think it's like a uh, exclamation point schedule or something. Yeah, there you go. All right, so Makai fell for the most obvious ruse of all time. Kibbo showed up and was like, we, we can we can make a peace treaty, and Makai was like, okay, and then that wasn't true, so now they're getting attacked. So for, the, for, so for this marathon, what we're doing is just the Murayama games, so not four, not five, not tactics, so just one, two, and three, and you get the full... Uh, you get three different versions of two. 
So this is any percent. After, so later on, I think tonight. For me, I'm in the U.S., so it's middle of the night. It'll be the bad ending for this game. And then tomorrow, to cap it all off, it's going to be 108%. So that's where you get all the characters and you get the best ending in the game. That's going to be a, uh, a tag team. Two runners are going to do it together. They're going to switch off. Uh, Kenny's going one once. Tom's doing that. He's going three once. Space Coyote's just doing one of the chapters. So it's only a couple hours. And you're also getting... Uh, Iodin Rising. I think Zero's doing that. As well as... Um... The other Murayama game that I can never remember the name of for some reason. Hero Alive or something? Forever Alive? Someone look at the schedule and just write it into the chat. Please. Alliance Alive. Thing. I knew it was a lot. Something alive. Oh, card stories. Yeah, card stories too. That's the oft-forgotten uh, cousin of Sweet Golden 2. So technically, actually, there's four Sweet Golden 2s. But it is the best, so, you know, you should have four versions of it. Alright, so Solenji lost that battle, so Luca Blight's gonna do the classic villain move of just killing his general. And Joey, he sees an opportunity here. He's gonna offer to attack Green Hill and take it himself. And as we uh, talked about earlier, because he isn't Atreides, strategy I mean, he knew strategy as if he was born to it and he just is an amazing strategist just immediately Alright, yeah, maybe not amazing. He did lose the war, so... Maybe not so amazing. So Chaco gives me my money back, but he does not give Pitcher his money back. So Pitcher gets, you know... As Pitcher does and runs after him. Well, in Green Hill, it was not a, it was not a bad strategy, actually. Like, you know, returning prisoners to Green Hill, then uh, sieging them to that way their supplies reduce faster, and also they fight against each other. It's a, it's not a horrible idea. Uh, 
Um, I'm sure at some point in human history that is a thing that happened. And yes, Leon Silverberg does show up. He becomes their strategist later on. He, for the bad guys. He is actually in the first game as a recruitable character. As well as the grandfather of two characters in Scone 3. And I believe he's Matthew's uncle. I think that's the, uh... They're all Silverbergs, right? Like, Silverbergs are... I don't know why I went this way. Add to the, uh, add it to the mistake counter. Silverbergs are like the... Um, the strategist family. A whole bunch of games have Silverbergs. There's a Silverberg in all of them except five. The first one has Matthew. The second one has Leon. Third has Caesar and Albert. And four has Eleanor. I don't count tactics. Uh, five doesn't have one. It does have Lucretia. Who I, I assume learned from someone? I, from a Silverberg, maybe? I don't remember. Shu at least did. Shu learned from Matthew, so... He's a he's a Silverberg in uh, in spirit. I mean, what we do know is that Lucretia is actually uh, Hugo's father. not what I meant to do. Alright, time for the most boring part of the entire game. So now we're going to run all the way back. We're going to go through Two River this time. And we're going to go to Green Hill. Everyone's favorite time to nap. So if you want to go do something else for another 40 minutes, I highly recommend it. Because that part of the speedrun, and really of the game in general, is just a lot of walking around. It's... It's not very enjoyable. And it's less enjoyable for me. Thank you, I appreciate it. I'm glad someone's at least uh, there. So I'm not doing it in vain. <laughs>
We can do names if we want, but they really don't matter. Yeah, they don't matter. There's no point. They're never even used. I would hope that Necklord would enjoy this game. Well, actually, Necklord wouldn't enjoy this game. This is where he dies. For real this time. Until he comes back in Suicode 6. We're, we're about at the midway point, too. Have about maybe three hours left. Well, probably over three hours because I've been going way too slow. Definitely been dilly dallying a little too much. Hopefully, it doesn't cause issues at the end. Except, well, can if I'm too slow. So, it's actually a situation where I explained earlier about the kindness point. Uh, and how it accumulates every two hours. And our whole plan here is to uh, be negative. That way you have 999 attack. But you will still accumulate points. So if you take too long in the speedrun, it will accumulate back up to a point where it is uh, back to normal again. It's not negative anymore. So then your attack is not 999 anymore. It goes back down to the normal level. Um, if you dilly dally too much, it is possible. Like if your speed run is a bit over, maybe at six hours forty, maybe it'll accumulate back, and you will have to either kill someone again. If, at that point, it's Eile who has the kindness rune. Has to kill Eile again in the final. It'll be in the final dungeon, and then it'll be fine. But it's kind of annoying. So that's actually where it's interesting how the speedrun itself is incorporated into the speedrun. <laughs> kind of, it's very meta in that way. I did a, I did a, a showcase a, a while ago. I think it was in twenty twenty two on here and I I was too slow I spent too much time looking at random things on the map no, that's not that's the mistake counter and by the time I got to the second to last battle in the final dungeon the kindness points were back to zero so I really bungled it at the end there Okay, so I'll, I'll explain the kindness points again. So, in this speedrun, one thing we do is we use the kindness rune. The kindness rune, when that is attached to your, I believe it's to your weapon, it will, you'll accumulate kindness points throughout. And the kindness points are, every two hours you just gain one. I think maybe you have to be in the active party. I don't remember the exact specifics, but you gain like one every two hours. Um, what that does is it adds some attack power to you. But you can lose kindness points by dying in battle. And like random encounters. Or boss battles. Um, and if you do that enough times, you will actually go negative kindness points and because as programmers know negative numbers are bad in programming and causes integer overflow or whatever and 
that'll actually have the attack power then wrap around and become 999, the highest possible value. So if you have the Kindness Rune and you have negative Kindness points, you will then have tons of damage. You'll do tons of damage. And that's how we're able to defeat bosses so easily. If you've been watching, you notice that you just like one shot any boss. And when you add that, uh, you use the Violence Rune as well. The Violence adds more attack. Not to the 999, but it just does it to like any attack value. Uh, I could go to sleep. So then you do tons of damage. So at the early stage of the game, for the first half, you have it on Nanami. And for the second half of the game, you have it on Ailee. Ailee uses... Uh, oh my god, why do I keep doing that? <laughs> I know it's option two. Ailee uses the Kite Rune. Which is just like an instant attack on everybody. And she does so, so, so she does tons of damage because she has the kindness rune and she has negative kindness points. It just kills whole groups of enemies in one shot. Now these are all glitches, of course, right? So you use this glitch, you use the Matilda glitch earlier. If you're trying to play this game glitchless, it's gonna have to be modified. Uh, so when the remaster comes out and speedruns are developed for that, it's going to be completely different. I'm sure someone's developed glitchless. I'm sure glitchless ones were made probably before the kindness glitch was found. That was, I don't know, five years ago, ten years ago? Uh, yeah, this way. So Nina gets kind of obsessed with Flick, which I mean, I guess I don't blame her. Flick is pretty cool. But Flick is still too hung up on Odessa, so... Yeah, apparently, yeah. Or I can just talk to Lucia. Lucia has a whip. Doesn't uh, Lorelei have a whip also? I don't know if she has it in these two games. She definitely has it in the fifth game. I get it right this time.
no idea what that sound effect is supposed to be. Oh, what do you know? Everyone looks in the complete opposite direction of what they have to be looking at. Geez, a hundred nine months. 
That's a lot of months. Oh my god. Oh, it's just Marvel Ant, 109 months. I know, right? Oh, this it's 108 plus uh plus tier McDole that you get in this game. That you can get. 109, there you go. 109%. Maybe someday someone will do that. I think you should have foresaw this and uh, prepared accordingly. Can I do anything with the controller today? So the important thing we're looking for here is we want Flick to have 100 magic when he's at level 33. I think we're gonna be alright? Yeah, he's already got it, so we're good. Alright, so we're gonna go to the rune shop here. We're gonna do some shopping. Who doesn't like a little bit of shopping? So there's your kite rune that we're going to be using a whole bunch. And we're taking off the violence rune and we're going to give it to Ivy. So now Nanami's time of having tons of damage is over. I'm not going to take the poison on Nanami. So the only way to actually unembed something is to add it to someone else. Or is to like put something over it. So this is a point where something would be different uh, if you actually picked up the hazy crystal earlier. You wouldn't attach the friendship. That's the only difference. So as you can see now, she does almost 500 damage per hit. That's all thanks to her value being 999. Because we had her die a couple times already in the game. Earlier when you fought the Mist Monster, when you fought the uh, Star Dragon Sword. And I believe she dies when you fight the Abomination. Oh, and in the Matilda glitch. 
So it's three or four times. Three times she definitely has to die. Now we get to run all the way back again. But luckily, because Ryu is actually level 55, it makes all these fights really easy. I can just escape from them without any chance of failing. For people who don't know, if it's a let go, that means it's a 100% chance of success running away. If it's a run, there is, I don't know what the chance is, but it is the chance that it can fail. Now we get to run through here again.
Oh, is it really 5.30 already? Where does the time go? All right, everyone, we're halfway through. More than halfway through, probably. Uh, tell me your earliest recoding memories, if you have any. I would like to hear it. Yeah, you know, we're all here because of him, right? This game wouldn't exist. It defined us, you know? At least for some of us, anyway. First played this game when I was 10 years old. Played them over and over and over again. I agree. I mean, obviously, you know, Final Fantasy gets all the all the love. And I like Final Fantasy. I'm playing through the uh, remake, Rebirth, right now. Going very slowly. Because, <laughs> man, there's a lot to do in that game. But I, you know, always, always love Sweet Code. It has a certain charm to it. So you struggled with it. What did you, what, what was the struggle? It is, it is like a, a harder game than the first one. The first one is very easy. You can blow through that game. This one has a lot more complexity. It's no three or five. Those ones have quite the complexity. 
But what was it about Sukun 2 that, that was so difficult for you? Yeah, there's definitely a lot more options in 2. The characters are more in-depth. Um, a little more difficult to get. In the first game, it's a lot of just talking to people and they'll instantly join you. And that is a thing in the in this one. But a few more of the characters are a little more complicated. Not nearly as complicated as 5, where every single character requires a three-hour tour just to recruit. Interesting. I wonder why. I guess, well, the early early parts of any game, right, are always a little boring. You always get a little apprehensive when you're playing because you don't really know what you're doing. It takes a little while to get into the rhythm. I'm like that with any game. I don't like starting new games for that very reason. Even though I know eventually I'll like it, it can be a bit difficult to get into something new. That's an important option there. You actually don't want Biggie to come with you. Yeah, in, in this in Spikon, there's oh, there is you know there's 108 characters, but some are forced on you. Like you have no choice but to recruit them. They're just automatically recruited. That's probably maybe a maybe a third of all characters in the game. Three probably has the most that are auto automatically recruited. Um And you don't need to get some of the other ones, like in this one, there are only a couple characters, like when we do the speedrun in the any percent, there are a couple characters that are not automatic that we do get. We get like, Gilbert sometimes is just kind of an accident, but Adlai is I want to say the only other character that is one that we can choose to get. And we only get him for two reasons, we, we get him for the elevator. We also get him because he has a special attack in the war battles, the inventor attack, which can be useful against Kiba or Luca Blight. How do you uh, how do you like three so far? How far into it are you? All right, so this is the refugee battle. It can either be really go really well or go really badly. We basically just need to we just want all these refugees to die. Don't take that out of context. <laughs> that is the battle, basically, is we just kind of sit here and watch Highland kill all these refugees. And so that's interesting. Okay.
But uh, you kind of hope, you know, we want him to die. Again, don't say that out of context. But sometimes they'll get really... Oh, see, and they do things like that. The computer will just... Okay, alright. I'll give him one. That's what he gets for attacking the wrong people. Ooh, this is... Okay. Alright. Alright. Would have been nice earlier, but okay. So, I think we're at a point now where we're probably looking at a pretty protracted refugees. Because these guys are going to go up every turn. But Highland, for some reason, won't attack them. That's a really weird way it's designed. I'm not entirely sure why. But maybe we'll get lucky and maybe we'll actually attack. <clears throat> oh, interesting. Okay. Well, I guess we got lucky. They killed each other. That's not bad. <clears throat> Yeah, the battle system in 3 is very different. Uh, the pairing, and also the fact that your rune attacks can hit your own party members. Are you are you playing it the way where you play everyone's chapter ones, then everyone's chapter twos, or are you doing everyone's chapter one, two, three, then the next chapter one, two, three? Personally I do it the former. I think that's how you're supposed to do it. Otherwise you're seeing content and you're seeing events that you're not supposed to have seen yet. You're seeing them a little too early. I'm glad you're doing it that way. Thomas's chapters are... It depends. Like, If you're playing casually, there is a way to give Thomas a whole bunch of money early on. You can place paintings and statues in, in Buddha Castle. And then he can sell that and get a bunch of early money. But you're still going to have a hard time because Thomas and, and Cecile, they start at like level one. So you're going to have a rough time. But you can recruit a couple character characters. You can get Mel. You can get uh, Augustine. And of course, you can always do the classic method in Suicoden 3 of getting a bunch of money, which is just playing the lottery until you win and i don't mean like you know playing it properly i mean buying some lottery tickets uh then resetting if you don't win <laughs> so you just keep uh resetting until you get like a hundred thousand or if you're really lucky five hundred thousand So this is my favorite FMV in the game. It's really cool. Of course also, you know... Pretty horrifying that he just like massacres the entire population of the city, but... Still a cool FMV.
I'm getting all the drops today. So what I did there was I... I took an item from the bag and put it on Jarena. So I need that item for a future battle. And it's faster to just do it that way than to go into the menu right now and, and do it. So they say anyway. I just do what I'm told. So if you're playing this game casually right now, you'd probably stop in Highway Village up here. This is 108. Uh, you would do that. For sure. Uh, you're going to stop in that village. You're going to pick up Butch and Humphrey. Two characters from the first game. You're going to go on a little bit of a side quest. Up to a mountain. Um, where you fight like a harpy. And then you recruit Fudge and Humphrey. We're not going to do that because that takes forever. Luca is just like filled with rage. He's just freakishly strong for some reason. He does also have the beast room. Uh the beast room's kind of separate. I don't think it actually attaches to anybody.
Alright, so this is where Leon Silverberg comes into the picture. He is... Strategist. He's a Silverberg. And now he's going to start working for the bad guys. Even though he was a good guy in the first game. And it most certainly, in Suicoden, it's not the first time a good guy will turn into a bad guy. I'm of course talking about Suicoden 3. I will not say who it is. But, uh, it is someone. Someone very near and dear to our hearts. Oh, you mean in three? They're just trying to save the world? I mean, in their own, like, twisted sense, I guess. Like, they, they thought that, um... The only way to save the world was to basically destroy it anyway. Destroy it early. I think that was their goal. Like, they knew the world was going to get destroyed at some point. And they were like, oh, if we just do it now, then it can't happen in the future. It's, it was like a... If they, I guess they didn't destroy it, they just wanted to, like, damage it. So there's our one optional recruitment, just so we can get that. All right, one more. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> oh no, we're good, we're good. I miss red. We're fine. I have the lightnings already. Yeah, it's all perspective. You know. Villains, they have a reason for something. They're not just doing something for no reason. Alright, so what we're trying to do here is get as far away from the Highland as possible. Because again, this is a scripted battle, so it's just going to end after a couple turns. We don't want them to attack us. Because that wastes time.
Not all of them, no, no. Only... I mean, for the most part, they pretty much are. <laughs> um, but there's a few that you can kind of just, like... If you want to have fun with them, go around and, and kill people. But, like, for this, for this one, there's no point, because it's just going to end in one turn. The, all the early battles are entirely scripted. Um, the final battle really doesn't have a whole bunch you're doing, and you're just killing like one guy and you go into the city. It's, but for the most part, yeah, it's. Probably should have moved Gilbert over one. Yes, I should have moved Gilbert over one. Yeah, the Uber one in Green Hill is a little more complicated. There's actually two options you can take there. You can either do the Uber one or you can do the Border one. We do the Border one because it's much faster and it's completely scripted. Uh, the Kiba one is kind of scripted, but you still have to do something. Nuka Blade, more battle also scripted, but you still have to do something. Formation I gotta do here. Where is he? Check on the book. Not see Canis. For some reason that breaks the audio. Not really sure why. I think uh, maybe you can skip it, but I think actually doing the border battle is faster than staying in the castle. Or if it isn't, then you know maybe you found a new way to do it. Alright, so this is where Joey does the infamous uh, poisoning his blood a little bit every... drinking poison a little bit every day to make it so his blood has poison in it, so then you can poison the king. Classic. Way of getting around a food tester. This is where he says, that person wasn't your father. And I give him a little bit of a clue of who Julia really is. <laughs> Alright, I've never seen Gilbert do this before. Well, the nice thing about like the border battle is you don't really need luck for it because it's you're just moving left the whole time. You're just taking all your characters and moving as far away from everybody as you can because all that's happening is they're just moving their characters closer to you and then disappearing. And then the next group comes in, moves closer to you, and disappears. So you're not actually getting into any battles. The Green Hill one would require a lot of RNG, kind of like how this one does. 
This one requires a lot of luck. So the idea about this game, or this this battle, you have to destroy Kiva's unit. So that means you have to hit him three times, which is a huge ask, honestly, because he is a tank. Unlike every other unit too, you have to hit him three times instead of two times. Well, so you pack in as much like magical abilities as you can. Like, extra abilities. You have... Uh, Fire Spear. You have Luke's Wind Magic. And you have Adlai's Invent Ability. Which kind of sucks right now. Because I cannot get Victor close. There is like a safer way to do this. I do not remember how to do it. Okay, all right. Some move you here. Wait. Okay. So we got one in. I'm gonna go ahead and use invention. <laughs> Alright. Please don't die, Adlai. Okay, it's just Victor. Victor can't die. We're fine. Okay. Okay, alright, alright, alright. Let's, uh, let's move Gilbert a little closer. Okay. Okay, we're only up one. One more to go. So you can also time out this battle, but it takes a really long time. Thanks for the raid. You've now you've come into the Cuba battle. One of the more obnoxious parts of the speedrun. Alright, let's try. Come on, we got two on him. We can get one more.
It is an all-time great. I 100% agree. I also have high hopes for Ayuden. I think it's going to be good. Come on. Well, we're in for the long haul now. That really sucks. And all my units are dying. This is, it doesn't get worse than this. So we're looking at a timeout on this one. Great, kill yourself. Good job. Mm hmm he can't die, he's crypt character. My units are really blowing it. I know, I do respect it, but I also hate it. I just want him to die, because I just want to go to the next thing I have to do. Just let it go. It'll be over soon. I think just one more turn. Killed one of them. Alright. Fine. If that's what you want to do. Alright. We're good. It's over. So the idea here actually is that Highland wanted to get rid of Kiba, so they threw him in the front line or just like, you can die. Because he was a supporter of the previous king, not of Luca Blight, so he had to go. This is where they learned that the king is dead, and that Luca Blight has taken over as king.
So that's Sheena, and Sheena is Lapont's daughter. Son, sorry, son. Another situation where when I was a kid I didn't know if they were a man or a woman. Uh, and Lapont is the president of the Torn Republic, which to the south is the setting of the first game. Yeah, I don't know what it was exactly about Sheena. I guess it's not really... I guess you're introduced to Sheena. You recruit him when he's hitting on a girl, so maybe it should have been obvious. But for some reason, it wasn't to me. So now we're on our way to Torin, which is again where the first game took place, and we have to get there. So we're going to take a, a little forest mountain path. Luckily in the any percent speed run, you only have to do this once. In 108 you have to do it twice, I think. Of course, if you want to recruit Tyr from the first game and you ever want to use him, you have to make this run every time you want him in your party. Classic Freed.
So now you're in the castle that's supposedly collapsed <laughs> at the end of the first game. Apparently it didn't, and it's perfectly fine. So you got a couple characters from the first game here. You got Alan and Grand Seal and Tesla. And the pond, of course. And, and Valeria and Kasumi. So you get a choice between Valeria or Kasumi. For the speed run, always go Kasumi. Because we need uh, some equipment that she has. We also use her in the Lugal Blight battle, so that's one reason. Have a move. Now I do. What is going on? We're gonna have to hope for the best.
actually a little concerned. You want to be louder? I can't make myself louder, unfortunately. Like that. I made it louder. Is it any better? I'm afraid I don't know anything about audio. All I know is that my headset sucks. Interesting. Well, there you go. At least someone can hear.
Yeah, so somehow Luca Blight can just do that. Don't worry about it. I am saving a lot right now because this battle that's coming up is going to be a bit hairy. I don't know. Something didn't quite go right earlier and I'm a little concerned. But let's not think about it. Yeah, that's the thing. I can't actually restart because restarting messes up the speed run. <laughs> So, yeah, this is, uh, this is going to be interesting. Kasumi does not have a, so what I think we're actually going to do is we're going to risk this. We're going to do a bit of a risk here, and we're going to do the unsafe way. We're going to attack with Ailee in the first round which can be bad, but we're going to do it. Yeah, it's definitely... This is the second best boss team in the game, behind the Necro one, obviously. Pray for me right now. Okay. It was not critical. And that was the reason why we did it. Because I knew she was going to die there. Because I did not have another uh, Jizo for some reason. So because we did so much damage in the previous in the first one, we don't actually have to do anything. It only does that much damage because Ailey has the kindness rune and the violence rune. So it does extreme damage.
Yeah, it's the glitch kindness room. Navigate these menus soon. So for those who don't know, the reason why that did so much damage, I'll explain again. Uh, the kindness rune that is attached to Ailee uh, increases your damage for every kindness point you have, and you accumulate kindness points throughout the game as you're playing, but if you die in battle, you lose kindness points. Um, if you die enough times to actually go below zero on your kindness point number, that'll cause a bit of a glitch where your attack value then kind of wraps around and becomes it's like energy overflow or whatever and that actually causes your attack value to be maxed out and that's how Ailee and by extension the uh the circus attack does so much damage All right, so Luca Blay is dead, and we think that Jillia will then become queen, and then be like, "Oh, the war is unnecessary." However, Joey managed to get himself betrothed to Jillia, so now, even though it's a bit odd, no royal rules really work like this. He becomes king. He kind of engineered this whole thing. He wanted Luca Blake to die. So now he's king. Gold digger, maybe? Power digger? For sure. <laughs> I 
Hanger. That's true. Like, it's not like he really had a bigger army or anything. He just... He knew what wheels to grease. He's a smart guy. Also probably helped that Agilia was not the king's son daughter, so... Probably made people a little more amenable to it. Yeah, I suppose that's true. And there were a few instances where, you know, bigger army wins the civil war kind of thing. Agree, I can't wait for the remaster too. Hopefully it comes out eventually. <laughs> it's been a year and a half since it was announced and still hasn't out yet. Yeah, you had like, you know, Henry Henry the Seventh coming in, who was kind of distantly related. George the First, distantly related, but he was a Protestant.
All right, so the next place we're going, we're going to Tinto. Which is gonna be a fun one. Now, if we were doing the bad ending, which will actually be showcased in a little bit, actually, in a few hours, we would be getting near the end. But we're not doing the bad ending. We're doing 90%. So, still got another, like, hour and a half. Encounters today for some reason. Be careful of those little like sticks that stick out because you can actually run into them and they stop you. It's very annoying. Now, this is my personal favorite town music in the whole game. Love this one. Also used in the Seal Guide 2 uh, opening uh, intro video.
So Tinto has been uh, marred by a little bit of a vampire problem. It would appear that Necklord has returned and he has, has decided he wanted to make he wants to make this his kingdom. Alright, so Jess is back. Remember Jess from earlier in the game? He mistakenly believed that I killed Annalie, the mayor. It was actually Joey. We all hate Jess. Jess is annoying. Add to the mistakes. Stop. Now I go upstairs. I was supposed to go to Nami's room. So if this was the bad ending, I was trying to do the bad ending, I would pick a bunch of options here and actually run away. And I continue to run away over and over and over again. You have to make a lot of choices to do that. And it causes the game to prematurely end. Tinto gets destroyed, a bunch of people die. Uh, the game is just left uncertain. Like, you don't know if Neckler is even going to, like, even be defeated. Um, you just run away, and none of it matters anymore. And the game ends. And that is uh, referred to as the bad ending. Because it is a pretty bad ending.
Alright, so we just gotta defend three times. It's kind of annoying, but... Okay, so we were gone for like two minutes, and the uh, the vampires and zombies just kind of just kind of showed up and took over Tinto. So Khan's back. Khan knows how to finally like prevent Necklord from keeping himself alive after you supposedly kill him. This is Sierra. Sierra has some history with Necklord. The reason why Necklord is a vampire is because he stole a rune from Sierra. So Sierra kind of wants it back. Everyone loves Sierra. I, I'm a big Sierra fan as well. There's a big uh, fight between people who like Sierra and people who like Miyakis. Miyakis in the fifth game.
Miki's is a good character. I do like Miki's. All right, time to do the Tinto Mines. I never remember how to get through, so I have to look at my notes as I travel. As I move. Having a very peaceful run through this so far. All right, here he comes. The Rock Golem. He gets his own FMV.
What an FMV it is, too. Pretty easy, though. Especially when you're doing 4,000 damage. for the infamous zombie skip? You guys think I can do it? Alright, it's gonna be not fun. Oh! <laughs> Already a fantastic start. We're supposed to be able to... in the zone. Nope. 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 Not too early. Did it. Good job. Better be early than late though, that's for sure. Shoe is the goat. Shoe is the best. And everyone knows it. So there is a guy standing there, by the way. You just can't see him. It's a little weird. I don't know why you can't see him. Oh, I hate when that happens. Good job, Luke. Sometimes Eileen misses. Here we go. It's almost time for the neck lord fight. Okay. Huh.
too bad we don't get to hear it more. Because it really is quite, quite good. I'll believe you on that. I, uh, I've never ever played any of the Mortal Kombat games. Well, maybe when, when I was a kid I did. And that's it. He's dead. No more Necklord. And everything is back to normal. Just tell Chess to go away. Oh yeah. You know, fun fact, if I was gonna get world record, it would have to be, uh, I would be finishing soon. <laughs> but, uh, that's not gonna happen. I don't know what she thought she was doing. And now, the only time I hear this, the broken music. Very rare. You only hear it this one time.
All right. Three minutes? I don't know, man. I don't think that's gonna work. Okay, now we're in good shape. We're gonna act a little strange because I did the movement wrong, but that's fine, don't worry about it. I always make me laugh. Okay. So we got a couple fights to do in here. We gotta do the Lucia fight. That's where we're gonna find out if I did the Rune Unite glitch correctly. Uh, if I didn't, that's really bad. Don't know how to fix that one. Uh, to be honest, I don't even know how it's even possible. How could I have gained a kindness point already?
games bugs. Air attacks back. Oh, that's not good. How'd that even happen? Sick. Well, uh, I have a bit of a problem here. <laughs> we can try killing Eile. That's actually the only way. Yeah, we'll try doing that. I don't know why she got it back so quickly. That's like really strange. But we're just gonna have to um, make her die. Yeah, we're gonna improvise here. We're improvising. What's the wrong with that? Alright, we'll just, uh... Done with everybody else. Attack her. Make it so she damage. It should only take a couple turns. Don't be doing that, please. Really don't want you to be doing that, please. Thank you. Hopefully this will fix it. Okay, we're good. Very strange. Yeah, I'll explain. Let me uh, let me explain, and I'll explain in a few minutes. Let me just get through this next battle, and then I will explain <laughs> how why it happened. I don't know. To be honest, it's way too early. It must have. That's really strange. Like I've seen this happen, but only wait at the right at the end of the game. Never this early. We're good. This this thing works at least. This glitch is working. This glitch it allows you to do all these rune unites. So you have to uh, discard a couple items at one point, and that causes a glitch to happen. I have no clue the glitch. I don't know how it, how it works, but it, it causes it so that Rune Unite glitch happens, and all those Unites happen, and it happens really quickly. So, it run, so you just do it right at the beginning, before everyone else goes. But uh, what happened with the with Eilie? So the kind of room uh, 
you accumulate points throughout the game that affects your attack score. She uh, died a couple times earlier in the game, so what happens is when you die, you lose kindness points, and if you go negative kindness points, that actually causes a glitch, which causes the, your attack value to go up to 999. Um, the problem is, as you go through the speedrun, you accumulate time, so that negative value then can become unnegative again. It can become positive, and that resets your attack value back to a normal number. Um, so that's where actually the aspect of a speedrun comes into play, because you need to go fast, because, or else, the uh, kindness point will accumulate again. So apparently that happened. For some reason, my game ticked up an hour, and the kindness point disappeared. No clue why. Very early. I've never seen it this early. But we fixed it. For now. Yeah, I know. It is, it is sad that he passed away. He didn't get to see Iodin get finished. He didn't get to see... Um, is going remasters. It's really sad. I don't remember all the the science behind the uh, Rune Unite glitch. It's complicated. It's all about like uh, bites, like where items are in the in the menu, when you get them, it's very complicated. It's why, like, getting the hazy crystal early can mess it up. There's, like, a, there's an explanation somewhere. I should probably learn it. We're doing the circus attack again, which will do the other ungodly amount of damage. A, a cool 9,000. Yeah, the one way one's gonna be uh, interesting. There's gonna be two runners running it. Uh, they're gonna be switching off.
Yeah, it's all that, that memory. Memory management. It's just like memory issues. And some better computer scientists than me figured it out. He was a few different people. Yeah, you you drop the robe and the bandana. That's how that's what they figured out. I say those are some smart guys coming up with this stuff. I wouldn't have been able to do it. Those are those scripted battles where all you need to do is just get one guy into the city. So all you need to do is just do this. They're not gonna attack you. So we're back in Muse. It's all empty because all the civilians were sacrificed to the rune. That FMV, as if you can recall. This game is 100% worth playing. You should absolutely play this game. You should play the first one first, then play this one. 
it is one of the greatest RPGs ever made, in my opinion, but also it's just a fact. Yeah, you could also just wait for the remaster when it comes out, if it ever comes out. Now you don't need to, but you should. You should. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, it's too, this one is timeless. There's something about this one that just makes it timeless. The first one, for sure, shows its age. Yeah, I hope so too. I hope it comes out this year, but who knows. I know. What is that? Two greats. Yeah, the 90s and early 2000s. Those were the days. Also, wish I was young, too. That would be nice. Kiba's gonna go uh, on the secret mission with like 10 guys. He's gonna garrison a whole fortress with 10 guys. Glad. I'm glad that we can uh, make you happy. Makes us happy to play them. Well, somewhat. Games themselves. Speedrun. Eh. But I'm glad that uh, you guys are enjoying it. Alright, so again, this is another scripted fight where you really don't have to do anything. Just 
So you create these kind of like choke points where you're stopping the enemy from being able to move and hit you. You have a Teresa and Gilbert um, and Kasumi. And she's moving Kasumi out of the way. Luckily, they're not really attacking anyway, which is kind of nice. Well, the, the archers are. Alright, so this is... They go one more time, and then it's over. Trick them into thinking heavy reinforcements show up, even though it's just a couple guys LARPing. I'm sure it'll be all right. We have some good dockers. Alright, so we're just gonna go and do this mission, just the two of us. So we can make it if we try. So Kiba died. Kiba is the only 108 star that is allowed to die because he's a he's a scripted death. All right, this dungeon absolutely sucks. There's no if ands or buts on that one. It absolutely sucks. encounter rate in here is like it's insane you're getting encounters every two steps it's also extremely confusing and i blame zero for that I, it took me a really long time to understand what we did in these nuts I, I literally, I, I walked three steps and got an instant encounter again.
Remake probably won't fix it. Maybe it'll make it more annoying. Alright, we're out of the annoying area. Hey, luck must be low or something. It's still gonna be 2D. She just jumped up to like 64. It's pretty insane. No, I don't think so. I don't think they encounter, uh, they happen on ladders. Uh, so insufferable. Yeah, it's just a remaster. Yeah, it's gonna be like they're probably gonna try to make it look a little more 3D esque. I just let her get shot. Doesn't she understand? Luca Blight took like 30 arrows. And you can't even take one arrow. Actually, in her gut. If it was in her knee, she'd be fine. But she wouldn't be an adventurer anymore, as they say. But she'd at least live. I know there's 
there's like stats involved in if she lives or not, but it's like, uh, I've never experienced it. Yeah, you gotta actually make the choice there. I don't do it here, because there's no point. But if you actually want her to live, you gotta make the choice. Yeah, I mean, I never had a tro I never had any issues with uh, Nanami not surviving when I would do the best uh, ending. Casually. But I also just never took armor off, because it didn't matter. You had someone with money anyway, who cares? All right, we're getting close to the end here. It's really quick. It's like, like three seconds or something. Am I doing? Yeah, we're getting close here. Hopefully Eilie doesn't gain a kindness point again, because that was very obnoxious, and I have no idea why it happened so soon. Mm. That's certainly not going to help. Thought she did. I know she died on Star Dragon Sword. Maybe not on Abomination. Maybe she didn't die for some reason. I could have sworn she did. But whatever. I fixed it. I just had her die again. Maybe she didn't die during this monster or something? I don't remember though.
In any case, we gotta finish this game quick. Or else it's gonna happen again. Maybe someday we will. Just have to hold out hope. Maybe if Iodin is successful, but we'll see. Nope. Every time. Yeah, that's possible. I mean, honestly, it probably was gonna happen anyway. I'm being so slow at this run that it probably was going to happen in our no anyway. La... La Reno yo however you're supposed to pronounce it. This is another scripted fight where you don't do anything. S4 is good. One, eh. I, I'm a fan of threes. I think they're interesting. 
Three is a lot of just like retreat until whenever and wait it out. But they're kind of fun to do. Good battle theme too. Five is kind of stressful because it's real time. That's pretty much true, isn't it? You win the um, Great Hollow fight in First Chapter 2, and that is pretty much it. All right, let's go. Final war battle. So all we need to do is kill one guy. That's it. You gotta kill one guy. It should be no problem. But it always is a problem. Every time, every single time, hits the wrong guy. <laughs> nice, okay. So they're not going to attack you. They will always just wait. <sighs> hey, you really don't care. He's just a he's just a cell sword. me to die. This game wants to kill me.
was four, by the way. Just gonna point out one more time, the defense is four. Yeah, this is really bad. This sucks. He doesn't even have the decency to attack me himself. Thank you. Fine. It's over. Still good there. And we got through it. We just gotta get through a few more fights and then we're done. All gonna unite and just obliterate Lucia. Lucia's never even gonna get gonna get the chance to whip anyone. Let's go. That's the, uh, the infamous kindness rune glitch. Her attack level is at 999.
It's really at 65k. It's crazy. Only it could actually be that number. Every single one of these, I'm gonna be looking, just waiting for it to only be like 80. That's distressing. All right, I think I remember the... There it is. I knew it was gonna happen. Foul on this one. You may need to just make it friends. Uh, I don't know why my game is messed up. Why it's this bad. Please attack. So she's down to, to 21. Uh, it's... We'll just, uh... <laughs> Do that again. I, this is very strange. I've never seen it tick up that quickly.
game despises me. I understand defending. I wish there was a way I could attack my own party. But there isn't. Insane behavior right now, Ailey. Uh, there should be one more fight, I think. Please ship before you do that. Thank you. Fine. Okay, we're back. I do not understand why There's something wrong with my game clock or something. Alright, well at least it happened before you got the seed and cold one. Very nice. And low wind's good. So we're we're good. We're finally finally good.
All right, so Jilly is gonna run away now. movement. All right, let's do this. That FPS drop. There's gonna be some serious FPS drop in this fight. Alright, we got a leg up on this battle. Good job. We didn't want to ruin it for you. That one's a bit of a stretch, but I'll give it to you. FPS drop, very nice. There it is, another drop. Oof. Oof. Basically was frames for a minute. Alright, Space Coyote, I'm almost done. Sorry it took forever. I blame everything. Everything went wrong. It's possible that frame rate comes into play. I'm uh, not sure though. I mean, it's just, everyone's using the PSTV anyway, so it's probably not that much different. Can you practice that dice game? Is that even possible to practice uh, that? All right, we just got a few more text boxes and then you're free of me. This channel is free. 
from this nightmare. Oh wait, no, I gotta go to the Great Hall first. Let's see. Make me do this. want to slow down you still got about uh, two and a half minutes left i know yeah we're still in the time estimate and that's it it's done it's over oh my god i was without a doubt the worst of worst speed run i've ever done in this game it was really something everything that went wrong that could have gone wrong went wrong. <laughs> yeah, timer's still going. Timer's not going to stop. The timer never stops. No. But do you stop it? Great question, actually. How do you actually stop it? Do you pause it? Step it? There we go. Oh, wait. Oh, look at that. I did it in uh, zero seconds. Now that's a record. All right. Space Coyote, I'm gonna... Uh, I'll stop so you can get started. Are you ready? If not, I can sit here and complain. wish I could restart, but thank you everyone for the uh, GG's that were not deserved, but I appreciate it. Alright, I'm gonna stop. Thanks for the last second uh, commentary, Doc. Well, yeah, I have I have it. one more thing to say about this, okay. okay? If you guys wonder what happened to Joey with this ending, in this ending, Joey and Ryu break up. And Joey is now Ryu's ex. I don't get it. No, that's bad. Oh, because that's where you have to find you by that X, get it? Oh. Now that was a deep cut. <laughs> I'll give it to you.